Welcome one and all to a Death Stranding trailer analysis. It's been a while since we have done one of these, so I'm really excited to dive back in. I honestly wasn't expecting much from Kojima's Tokyo Game Show 2018 presentation when it was first announced, especially since Kojima Productions actively discouraged against getting too excited for it, but then again, they did tease something special for the fans. Well, they certainly delivered on that front, as the studio not only provided a surprising amount of new information about some of the game's characters, they also showcased brand new footage introducing a character who was teased back in the Game Awards 2017 trailer. Now, I know many of you have been eagerly anticipating my analysis of the E3 2018 trailer. All I'll say about that is that it's still in the works, and if it's any consolation, the new footage and information from Tokyo Game Show 2018 does go a long way in informing what's going on in the E3 2018 trailer, so the upcoming analysis will ultimately be better off for its delayed release. For now though, let's go ahead and take a deep dive into this short clip that Kojima showcased introducing Troy Baker's character, the Man in the Golden Mask. Right out of the gate, we are given confirmation that the character most thought to be a masked version of Mats Mikkelsen isn't Mats at all, but rather an entirely different person. This was something that I theorized back in the Game Awards 2017 trailer analysis, noting how while the two characters did similar hand gestures, they were different in that the man in the golden mask pointed with one finger, while Matt's pointed with two. It was a slight difference that could have meant nothing, but knowing Kojima, I figure that may be a very deliberate hint on his part, and as it would turn out, they are indeed separate people. Now, as soon as the trailer brings us into the cutscene, a few things immediately become apparent. One, the freeway signs here could suggest that this is somewhere in the United States, or United Cities as it's known in this game, as these signs bear a significant resemblance to what you might find in America. Two, the ravaged environment further goes to show that Death Stranding does in fact take place in a post-apocalyptic world, one that's been annihilated by some kind of cataclysmic phenomena. Presumably the phenomena is called the Death Stranding, which the official synopsis suggests utterly transformed the world while noting that Sam must brave this world and embark on a journey to reunite the shattered world one step at a time. Now, judging by the amount of rust on these cars, I think it's safe to say that Death Stranding takes place many years after the apocalyptic cataclysm, with my best guess being somewhere in the ballpark of one, two, maybe even three decades, possibly more. The ruined vehicles do look like ones you might find in our modern day and age in the early 21st century, so I gather maybe the year Death Stranding takes place might be somewhere in the ballpark of between 2030 and 2050, possibly beyond. A semi-futuristic setting is made all the more apparent by some of the technology of this setting, including the health indicator handcuffs that Sam is wearing on his right wrist, and the artificial womb that allows its wielder to form an umbilical connection with a clairvoyant baby that warns the user of impending threats via a shoulder-mounted mechanical arm. We are definitely not in full sci-fi territory, but this is definitely many years into the future from our modern day and age, a future that's definitely not been kind to this planet. Another potential hint for this cutscene setting is the building in the background. Unfortunately, nobody has been able to pin down exactly what building this is, or if it's even derived from a real-life landmark. Some have theorized it could be the Empire State Building, others have pointed to LA City Hall, but none of them are an exact match, and I myself haven't been able to find anything that bears an exact resemblance. We could be looking at some random fictional building though, so it might not actually be that much of a hint, but it's worth keeping in mind on the back of your head just in case moving forward. As Sam Porter Bridges keeps walking and approaches the camera, it is possible to get a closer look at this shoulder-mounted package carrier, which we see being used in Death Stranding's E3 2018 gameplay trailer. I'll dive into the potential gameplay implications of this in that trailer analysis, but for now, I want to point out that these are labeled with a carrying capacity, potentially suggesting that weight of packages will have to be taken into consideration before embarking on a long and arduous journey involving transporting and delivering packages. More specifically, this particular shoulder mount has a carrying capacity of 200 pounds, Anyway, moving on, Sam eventually comes to an abrupt stop as Troy Baker's voice rings out saying, Well, shit. And as the camera pans, we can make out additional environmental details, like a second collapsed freeway bridge with associated signs, some scaffolding and structures jutting out, and a handful of road lamps that remain standing. 
As the camera finishes panning after the man in the golden mask, Tao Tao, he had a special surprise prepped. A new character eventually comes into view, one who is being transported by Sam Porter Bridges. This reminds me of how the E3 2018 gameplay trailer showcased Sam lugging around a bagged corpse on his back while struggling to keep his balance, though in this latest footage, the body he's transporting is very much alive. As the face of this solemn looking individual comes into clearer view, it's possible to see that this is none other than Stephanie Yostin. Not only do her facial features match the actress, but another hint Kojima provides here is this Dutch flag, referencing how Stephanie is from the Netherlands. Kojima and Stephanie have both been completely mum and playing coy about all this, but not only has Kojima blatantly hinted at her involvement in the past, Stephanie's manager Mickey McTroy low-key confirmed her involvement on Twitter. Though, who this character is, what her role is in the story, and why she's being transported like a giant burrito is still a complete mystery. I would bet that this is an assignment from the United Cities of America's Bridges government organization, judging by how it was Bridges who supplied Sam's equipment. From there, the next shot shows us a close-up of the man in the golden mask, who makes note of how it would seem as though Sam's hands are full, acknowledging the life package he's transporting. During this close-up, it's possible to make out a couple of interesting elements about this character, starting with a shoulder-mounted mechanical arm, which clearly serves similar functions as Sam's, but features a completely different design. At first, I thought that maybe the man in the golden mask possessed the more futuristic version of the shoulder-mounted device, but now I cannot say for sure. I'm leaning more towards this being a more advanced version of the technology, with its simpler design possibly making it lighter and more efficient to carry around, but at the same time, Sam's mechanical device having more moving parts might suggest it's got additional functions. Another possibility I can think of is that they are the same type of device, but designed by different companies. Now, with this close-up shot, we are also able to glean at the face behind the mask, or perhaps I should say the lack thereof. Where eyeballs should be are instead these unnaturally large slits that look like hollowed out, oversized eye sockets covered by large eyelids. I can't tell if this is an optical illusion, and there is some other layer concealing his face, or if this man is supposed to look abnormal, disfigured, or downright inhuman. The trailer then proceeds as the man in the golden mask reaches with his hand to take the mask off, at which point it's possible to see this gold decorative piece that covers the top of his hand. This could just be an aesthetic thing, but at the same time, given it's got the same golden color and sheen as the mask, perhaps it plays an important role in allowing the wielder of the mask to use its powers. As he takes off the mask, you can hear Troy's voice speak the following dialogue. You can always tweak the rules. We can always tweak the rules. This might suggest that the power the mask grants him is the ability to bend the laws of this world, particularly where the world of the dead is concerned, which we'll see him do a bit later. At this point, it is also possible to notice a number of phenomena occur at the same time. Firstly, as he removes his golden mask, if you look towards the ground, it's possible to see that the vicinity is starting to flood, not too dissimilarly to what we saw in the Game Awards 2016 trailer, during which we see the area flooding to ankle height before Matt's character is introduced, and not too dissimilarly from the Game Awards 2017 trailer, during which a flood occurs as soon as the man in the golden mask gestures with his hand. Another phenomena that can be noticed as the golden mask is removed is that gravity in the area begins to shift as loose objects nearby begin to float upwards. The same effect can be seen occurring in the Game Awards 2017 trailer. As soon as Troy's character gives the hand signal, aside from the flooding, objects all around begin to float, from the loose debris of rocks in the background, the pistol in the foreground, the corpse of the dead Bridges crew member who met an untimely demise, the body of the live Bridges crew member who failed to off himself before being taken, and even the giant truck that Sam and crew were riding on before a crash placed them in this unfortunate scenario. One last strange phenomena is the way the golden mask emanates electrical sparks, as if being charged for use or as if contained powers are ready to be unleashed. Right as he's about to use the mask, if we pause at the right moment, it's possible to get a very good look at the character's shoulder insignia, which was clearly designed after the imagery of an Egyptian pharaoh, featuring the distinctly shaped and patterned crown, as well as the false metallic chin beards that pharaohs wore. 
In my last Death Stranding analysis, I theorized that this character might have ties with ancient Egyptian lore due to the pattern on the cloak's interior that's reminiscent of pharaoh crowns. But what was a theory before becomes certainty with this symbol, leaving little doubt that Death Stranding will take heavy inspiration from Egyptian mythology. As I mentioned in my Game Awards 2017 trailer analysis, among the most famous Egyptian pharaohs is King Tutankhamun, who was famously buried with a death mask that's become one of the most renowned artifacts in history. I also mentioned in that analysis that death masks are clearly referenced through visual elements, such as the body bag whose mummified corpse was defiled with golden soot where its face would be, and such as the golden mask worn by the mysterious character. The historical reference there is that mummified corpses of pharaohs were adorned and buried with golden death masks as a means to usher the spirit of the deceased into the afterlife. Speaking of the afterlife, I had also theorized in my last trailer analysis that the man in the golden mask may represent an ancient Egyptian god, specifically Osiris, god of the afterlife, the underworld, and the dead, as well as god of transition, resurrection, and regeneration all very important visual and thematic elements in Death Stranding. What's also interesting about Osiris is that he's associated with cycles of nature like growth of vegetation and the flooding of the Nile River, imagery that's visually represented through footage of rapid growth, decay, and rebirth of vegetation touched by timefall, and of the flooding that occurs when the man in the golden mask uses his powers. Further hints that he's related to Osiris is how his attire is primarily comprised of green and black, the same two colors that symbolize Osiris, with the color green representing rebirth and the color black representing the fertility of the Nile floodplain. As for what the character's powers entail, well, I got the sense that his supernatural abilities involve utilizing the death world as a medium or catalyst. Notice how while he points the mask towards the flooded ground, the mask begins to absorb the black liquid. Liquid which I've surmised to be water bleeding through from the world of the dead, which looks clear in limbo but looks like thick black liquid in the world of the living. As the liquid is being absorbed, you can see that a small whirlpool forms centered around the mask, right underneath the character's feet, through which humanoid creatures from the world of the dead seem to be trying to claw out of. Whatever this death liquid is, this character clearly has the ability to flood an area with it and then absorb it with his golden mask to use as a source of power. Also interesting to note is that as soon as this character begins to use his powers, the artificial womb or incubator reveals the baby in a similar fashion to Sam's incubator, suggesting that the baby has awakened from slumber. This seems to happen anytime the presence of otherworldly interdimensional death creatures can be felt nearby, creatures that the man in the golden mask summons as part of this ritual. You can even see his shoulder-mounted mechanical arm, controlled by the umbilically connected baby, come alive and point towards the nearest source of these beings. Now, I've discussed in past analysis the multiple stages of the mechanical arm's behavior based on the vicinity of these creatures. If the creatures are far enough away, the mechanical arm's flaps will light up and stay still as if in standby mode, which I'll call phase one. As the creatures get closer, the hand of the arm will point towards their direction, and the flaps will begin to open and shut in rapid succession, which I'll call phase two. Finally, when the creatures get dangerously close, it will start to spin urgently, which I'll call Phase 3. Going back to the Tokyo Game Show footage, you can see that while this arm is different in design from Sam's, it functions similarly judging by the way it flaps open and shut while spinning, which is Phase 3 behavior, indicating that the creatures are really close by. Though of course the man in the golden mask isn't at all phased by these creatures' presence, as he's seemingly able to command and harness them. The trailer then gives us a brief shot of Sam watching all of this craziness unfold, at which point we can see that not only has Sam's incubator also unveiled the baby inside, we also see that his mechanical arm is also reacting to the presence of the death creatures, but in Sam's case the creatures are far away enough that the mechanical arm is only reacting in phase 2 behavior, so opening and shutting but not spinning. Then seconds later we see the arm's flaps do a little twirl before locking into this cross shape 
We actually saw something similar happen in the Game Awards 2017 trailer, and back then, I thought that this might be something like a combat mode, because the shape reminded me of a weapon's crosshair, and because we see the flaps take this shape while the bridge's crew member shoots his gun. But now I'm starting to think that I might have been wrong about that. I'm starting to think that we might actually be seeing the arm clam up because of an overwhelming presence. Notice how the trigger for the Bridges crew member's mechanical arm clamming up here was Troy's character doing the hand gesture that kick-started the flooding, the strange gravitational behavior, and the eventual appearance of a giant Lovecraftian creature. In the latest footage, we see a similar pattern occur. Sam's mechanical arm clams up right as the man in the golden mask begins to use his powers to make a giant creature appear. So what I initially thought to be an alternate mode, indicating that the mechanical arm was prepped for combat, might actually be more of a oh crap we're screwed mode. It's as if the presence of death creatures becomes so overwhelming that the supernatural baby, and in turn the mechanical arm, no longer knows where to point or what to do except clam up and indicate great danger. I would even go as far as to say that the mechanical arm is afraid, judging by the way it's shaking, and since the baby ultimately controls the arm, the baby, feeling overwhelmed and frightened by what his clairvoyance is telling him, is likely to reflect on the arm's behavior. In fact, going back to the older trailer, right after Troy's character does the hand gesture, and right after the mechanical arm locks up, you can see the baby react as well as if jolted awake in panic. So to make a long story short, I believe that when the mechanical arm goes into this frightened crosshair mode, it's indication of a worst case scenario, of the presence of some overwhelming death creature. One more thing before moving on, I'd like to take a look at the baby incubator of the man in the golden mask. Much like Sam's incubator, the dark, opaque veil faded to reveal the baby at first detection of otherworldly creatures, which Troy's character summoned in this case. But the villain's incubator casing is a green color rather than the standard yellow, and more ominously, the light inside the womb emits a crimson red color, obscuring the details of the baby so that only their silhouette is visible. It reminds me of how in the Game Awards 2016 trailer, there comes a point in which the camera focuses on a baby doll that blinks with a red light while a small umbilical cord from Matt's character ensnares one of the doll's legs and drags it through the water towards him. It's a visual similarity that may further suggest that there is a connection or relation between Matt's and Troy's characters. Now, under the assumption that Troy's character is associated to the Egyptian god Osiris, who's to say that Matt's character wasn't derived from an Egyptian god as well? I discussed in my last analysis how Osiris was one of five siblings, born from the union of Egyptian gods Geb and Nut, god of the earth and goddess of the sky respectively. The union of earth and sky yielded three brothers, Osiris, Set, and Horus the Elder, and two sisters, Isis and Nephthys. If Mads were to be associated with one of these gods, one likely prospect is Set, brother of Osiris and god of desert, storms, disorder, and foreigners, as well as god of war and chaos. I've also stumbled upon other excerpts that list domains such as waste, drought, famine, destruction, hunger, and foreign invasion or influence. The name Set is also said to be translated as Instigator of Confusion and Destroyer, and this god was also known to be a trickster deity who often used deception to achieve his goals. I don't know about you, but looking at the Game Awards 2016 trailer, one could easily argue that all of these domains that Set rules over can be seen represented. Domains like disorder, war, chaos, destruction, and foreign invasion are synonymous with this ravaged urban setting theorized to be France, judging by these electrical poles, through which Matt's army of undead is marching through. Other domains like waste can be associated with all the imagery of decay displayed in the trailer, and things like drought, hunger, and famine are key elements of a war-ravaged city like this. Then there is the domain of storm, which may be represented by the puddles of water on the mud, or the upside-down rainbow, which may indicate a storm passed through recently. Also interesting is that whereas Osiris is often associated with the colors green and black, Set is said to be associated with the color red, a color that's prominently displayed in this trailer right before Matt's and his undead cohorts make an entrance. Overall, from what little we have seen of Matt's character in the Game Awards 2016 trailer, domains that the Egyptian god Set rules over and titles like Instigator of Confusion and Destroyer seem like apt descriptors of the character. 
If we were to assume that Mats is indeed associated with Set, then that would make him and the man in the golden mask something akin to brothers. Interpreted literally, they could be blood relatives, and interpreted symbolically, they could be part of a group of antagonists, each with their own unique quirks, that are based on powerful entities of Egyptian mythology, possibly being the game's boss battles. Perhaps what Foxhound was to Metal Gear Solid, or what the Cobra unit was to Metal Gear Solid 3, is what this group of Egyptian godlike entities is to Death Stranding. Even if it turns out that Mads and Troy's characters aren't literally siblings, even if I'm not 100% correct about the association to Egyptian lore, pharaohs, and gods, judging by how both draw their power from death, given how we have seen both of them cause a flood and use near-identical, albeit slightly different, hand gestures right before invoking their powers, and given how both entities were accentuated by the imagery of a red glowing baby, I find it impossible to deny that some kind of connection definitely exists between these two. Now, as if there weren't enough references to the man in the golden mask being related to Egyptian pharaohs and gods as it is, the creature he summons in the trailer happens to be a lion, which history has discovered were kept as pets by pharaohs as a means to assert their power and dominance, and they were actually often trained to guard the pharaoh's chariot or throne. I should also mention that in ancient Egypt, hunting lions was an activity that was specifically reserved for ruling pharaohs. Furthermore, going back to King Tutankhamun, one of the most prominent treasures tied to the famous pharaoh is this headrest made of elephant ivory, on top of which the back of the pharaoh's neck would rest upon. Kneeling to lift the king's neck is Shu, one of the primordial Egyptian gods who was associated with atmosphere and dry air, and he was also the grandfather to Osiris, Isis, Set, Nephthys, and Horus the Great. More relevant are the two lions on either side of Shu, which aside from representing the east and west horizons, also further drive forward the notion that lions were heralded as symbols of power in Egypt, and that they were creatures to serve the pharaoh. I could go on and on about all the ways ancient Egypt put lions up on a pedestal, but suffice to say that these animals were symbolically renowned in that era and culture's mythology. And the pharaoh godlike man in the golden mask summoning a lion further goes to highlight his direct ties to Egyptian mythology. Before concluding this analysis, there are a few things I'd like to point out about the summoned Lovecraftian lion, starting with its golden face. Not only does it indicate a direct association with the man in the golden mask, who also wears a layer of gold on top of his dark visage, it's also evidence that the body bag in the Game Awards 2017 trailer was indeed defiled with the mask-shaped golden soot by this enigmatic character. From the looks of it, anything that's smudged with this gold material is under the control of whoever wields the golden mask. So looking back at the old trailer, it's probably safe to say that the otherworldly creature that broke out of the body bag that was smudged with that gold soot was deliberately unleashed by Troy's character. I also want to discuss the Lovecraftian line's potential ties with the Lovecraftian Colossi from the Game Awards 2017 trailer, which share notable differences and similarities. As far as differences go, well, I was initially going to say that whereas the lion's face is covered by the gold material, the Colossi isn't marked with anything of the sort. But now that I'm taking a closer look, is it just me or do these hands for a head give off a tinge of gold that's harder to see in this footage due to poor lighting and foggy visuals. I cannot tell for sure if the Colossi so-called face is also masked with gold or if my eyes are just playing tricks on me. Now, an easy to spot difference is that the lion seems to be entirely comprised of the black gooey liquid while the Colossi looks more like it's made of abnormal flesh. Visually, both creatures give off that same Lovecraftian horror vibe, but they also do contrast in certain features and textures. At the same time, the circumstances under which both the lion and the colossi appeared are exactly the same. The man in the golden mask showed up, flooded the area and caused gravitational shifts as he unleashed his powers, and then a giant Lovecraftian creature appeared. Then again, whereas the lion was directly summoned from the golden mask, the colossi just kind of popped out of nowhere. At the very least, one aspect that's consistent is that Troy's character seems to have the power to call forth, tame, and command creatures from the world of the dead, with those bearing the mark of the golden mask being under his control akin to a pharaoh's personal pet or guardian. 
The exact mechanics of his powers are largely speculative, though, but what I will say is that he seems to be able to bridge the gap between the world of the living and the world of the dead, transporting creatures from the latter into the former, or at least giving them shape. Without additional details, though, with what little we know right now, there is really not much else I can say about the character. So, let's finish this analysis by discussing the final segment, in which we see the lion's face split open like a gaping maw before billowing a loud roar. So, first things first, anus for a mouth, that's kinda weird. Joking aside, right before disappearing, the man in the golden mask kindly informs Sam that all he has to do to get out of here alive is to not get eaten. Hmm, you don't say. But something that I'm wondering is if getting eaten by the lion will yield the same result as getting eaten by the Lovecraftian Colossi. I'm of course referring to the giant explosion from the Game Awards 2017 trailer, a phenomena that the E3 2018 trailer confirmed to be called a void out, which kills anything in the vicinity, sends Sam to the world of Limbo, and leaves a giant permanent crater on the open world that remains even when Sam returns. On the one hand, there are enough distinctions between the Lion and the Colossi that they might be entirely different beings, but on the other hand, both were seemingly called forth by Troy's character in similar fashion, so maybe the effects of being consumed by either creature isn't so different after all, maybe both result in this giant void out explosion. Just some food for thought as we await the next wave of information and footage of this highly anticipated title. Thus concludes this clip from Kojima's Tokyo Game Show 2018 presentation, and with that I would like to end this trailer analysis. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content and would like to support this channel directly, consider donating on Patreon. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.